Thank you very much, Jos, for joining us here today. Jos Schrut is the CHRO of Randstadt and he has agreed to join us for this conversation on how organizational leaders can lead their organizations through the crisis more resiliently. Thank you very much for joining us here today, Jos. Well, thank you, Katharina, and thank you for having me and connecting today. Um, that's a real good question, and, and not only uh, because it's so very relevant today when we're in the middle of the COVID-19 crisis, but anyway, in any uh, changes and challenges we're facing as an organization. I think for me, first of all, it starts with the emotional resilience of the individual, the leader themselves. Because it starts with, if, in, in a way, yeah, today, if I'm not healthy, if I'm not well, I cannot support my business. Mm. Same when you get the organization through those type of periods. Hey? It starts with yourself. Uh, but then, of course, it's really about connecting and communication. It's really about do make sure that your organization is aware about what's happening around it and what the impact is in your own organization and where you're going to. Make sure that you frequently communicate to your people. What we do, for instance, in those, also, again, in, in this crisis, is a highly frequent have our CEO connecting with his direct reports. And we organize that a couple of times a week, twice a week with every global region. Uh, we're... Um, across all of the world. Uh, so we do it in time zones and regions, uh, but also we ask our local uh, leaders to be in touch with their management and middle management frequently. So that there is also a personal touch and a personal connection. So mm. they not only share your own thoughts and what, where we're going, but also listen to them. They are the people who really do work in our business, are talking to our candidates, are talking to our clients, and in that way crucial to know what's happening outside as well. And that part, communicating from a leadership point of view, but also listening to what's happening locally for us is a key element. Are there some best practices that have established over the last four or five weeks? It's all learning in progress in the moment for all organizations. Is there anything that has worked particularly well for Randstad? Yes, and, and we're probably not the only ones, but as soon as the first crisis started to hit us in China, we created a, a global uh, steering committee which um, exists not only about myself, I'm chairing it, but also with our head of legal as well as uh, risk and audit and the responsible board members. And that meant that we were, could be very close to what was happening on the ground. And we had daily, and we still have those, by the way, that daily connects with local management to see what the situation is in that specific country. In this case, initially it was China, but later on that unfortunately grew to APEC and then to Europe and at the moment also in North and South America. And, and there from those meetings on, we cascade down to make sure that we are connected to the local businesses as well then as local uh, clients, candidates and authorities. Mm. So the listening process is obviously very important because you can use the emotions that are voiced and surfaced in the organization as warning lamps where things might be, you know, becoming critical. Now, once you have access to the emotions, how can you support the journey of sense making, of rationalizing, of taking control of the emotions and then aligning it with your strategy and the values and really taking um, maybe an opportunity out of the crisis? That's a very good question, Katharina. And in our case, of course, we have, we have, let's say, a market which exists both of our candidates, our clients, and also society and the role we play. And so our, our purpose is supporting people and organizations and realizing their true potential, mm -hmm. also in challenging times. And also making sure that we, had, we, we talk about touching the lives of people, their work lives. And also now, that's really crucial. So it is not only about what we do from, from that perspective globally, but also locally, what our people do, how they are in touch with people who might lose their job. So then our outpace business can really work with them finding alternatives. How can we reskill people from, for instance, now we have people from education who are not able to work, but they have been screened from a criminal track record and things, and that takes in some countries about a couple of months. They can do support roles now in the care business. Mm -hmm. Although that's just an example of, of what we can do and all to, well, again, connected, which I think is very important in this phase where we are, is what, what are our values? In our case, th those values are really important and had to know to serve to trust is what, what we do, but also very important, simultaneous promotion of all interests. That is what we try to be, and that is what helping us really through such a time of crisis. 
So how can you connect the values on organization level to the leadership level, let's say on a country or on a team basis? How can I be assured as a leader of team in teams in, in Runstad that my personal values are in line with the organizational values? And how do I feel the organization protecting me? Because as a, as a front leader, I might have to take very courageous decisions. Um, how can I make sure that the organization is with me, that we are aligned? For that, of course, there are a couple of ways of looking at it. First of all, everything we do on, on those values are connected with what we like to see as leadership behaviors. And from that perspective, we have a leadership framework, which exists of different uh, elements, or four elements, which support that, which support the behavior and, and what we want to see in our business. And then those two connected support our people to do that work. Because in a way, also what we do in times of crisis is, first of all, it's about yourself, being comfortable and healthy in your own position, then making sure that you do the same for your people and for your markets. Because if you don't look after it that way, you, you mm. can't play your role and you're not able to, uh, what we just talked about, to really live our values and really be there for mm. clients, for candidates and for our own employees to make sure that they can utilize their opportunities and their potential to the maximum. We know that in, in crisis times, we normally can't look like, say, many, many months ahead because we have to move on a pretty short line of sight. It's rather tactical steps that we can take in the moment and trying to be very agile um, in, in correspondence to the resilience that we try to develop here. So looking at the tactical levels, it's often very important to see the progress that we're making on a day to day basis. On an organizational level, however, I believe this might be a little bit more difficult, but how can you as an organization make the progress that you're making every single day? How can you make that transparent and also palpable for the teams out there in the region, out there in the world, that you're really doing something, that you're achieving the milestones that you have set yourselves in this time frame? Well, there are two ways of, of this, uh, Katarina. Uh, of course, we, you have the, the, the business performance itself and how do you measure and how do you do that and how do you do it in the short term. And then it's, of course, also the people component. Coming back to the first part, um, the good thing is we are a business which is, of course, in the front line of uh, the economic uh, situation in the cycle. Yeah, so we quite quickly see what's happening. Mm -hmm. And we are used to steer both long-term and, sh and, long and short-term at the same time. And because in our case, we immediately see the number of requisitions coming in, so demands from our clients, uh, the number of uh, flex workers working. Uh, we, can, we can really steer that on a day-to-day -day basis. So we have a quite short window where all of our systems are equipped to, to give us the, the impression to where we are. Uh, so that's one on, on the business side. Uh, on the people side, it's also very important in those times of crisis, and even more today when we have the majority of our workforce working from home, to check in how they are doing. Are they feeling well? How engaged are they? Do they have, or are they equipped to do their jobs to support each other, their peers, their teams, but also clients and candidates? For that, we constantly touch base with, and what I just referred to, the touch base from your manager, but also we do a, a frequent weekly check-in with a short engagement survey, not just on engagement, but also specifically questions which have to do with the COVID-19 crisis at this stage to really see early signs of where we need to intervene or where things are moving. So you have a survey on organization level that goes out to the entire Runstadt community or only to the leaders? To everyone. To everyone. All of our employees and of course, which is an indication of at all levels, you know, for our executive board, we see the results of their direct reports. But mm -hmm. for the level, we can see the scores of the local branch in Buenos Aires, in Sydney, in Kuala Lumpur and in Amsterdam. And um, in, in times of crisis, which leadership style has been proven to be most helpful? Um, how agile have you been in terms of your leadership style? Is there one style that you came to appreciate more in times of crisis? Well, I think in times of crisis, especially where now where it also has to do with a lot of health. And, and we have, of course, also people in countries, uh, Italy, Spain, but also in others who are personally impacted, either because they're ill themselves or even some. And, and luckily, our own people are still uh, recovering, or at least good, but also some have lost parents or family. Mm -hmm. and so first of all, it's the affiliative style. You know, it's really important to be there for your people. And, and so let, let's not underestimate that part. It, it's not really about humanity. And in our case, the human forward touch of, about our own business, which is crucial in our leaders. Yeah. So more than ever, uh, you see it. And more than ever, you also see that our people have it, and where normally they might not always show it.
it's that combination of, of both um, short and long term. So yes, sometimes a pace setting style is helpful just to get things done and to get through and to help people when they have to work from home to know what they have to do just to get them into a different rhythm and a different style. And, and at the same time, as a leader, you should not only think about the short term, but you also need to think about the future. And again, reflecting to the current crisis, also to what are we going to do when recovery starts in? Mm -hmm. Do we make sure that we're ready? And um, some say that, for example, empowering leadership styles are in particular effective in these times of crises because on the one side, you need to trust your people working from home. So trust is, a, is, a, is an important element. At the same time, you can keep on coaching them, going through that crisis, showing compassion and solidarity as, as key values. And at the same time, professionalism to move them to the next moment or to the next milestone. And then, yes, gaining momentum when you get out of the crisis. Absolutely, Katrina, and, and, and they won't be wrong by not mentioning it. it means that those things are already in our values, even outside of a crisis period. Eh? Trust and, uh, is one of our key values, uh, core values in our own business. So in, in general, our attention is we trust people unless proven differently. That's how we work. And, and yes, of course, automatically, when you are not in one office, you have to empower your people because there's simply no other opportunity. Yeah. Uh, so those things are, let's say, more the given. Uh, and then you, knowing that, you have to then see, okay, how, what's the best way forward? And then again, you have those two things. One, you need to be there really for your people themselves. And that's why communication, listening is so important to be there, to be in a way the secure base uh, for, for people. That's yeah. very important and that at all levels. Uh, and at the same time, it's of course your responsibility from a business performance point of view to think also strategically and already talk about with your people what will happen? What are the markets? How can you support people best? People meaning also our candidates and clients now, but also in the future. I think the secure base as a leader is becoming in, in, incredibly important in times of crisis, but also the, the ability to dare, to reach out, to try something new, to be courageous and to, to um, challenge the things that are and inspire what could be in the future and, and really taking the, the crisis as an opportunity to grow and um, innovate. How well is Randstad prepared to go through this crisis? I think that on, on hindsight, we are very lucky that we have been investing uh, for the last years in technology and digitalization of our services. Mm -hmm. And technology really to make sure that almost all of our business is working from home at the moment. That's only possible because all of our networks and everything is equipped. The whole of our infrastructure is equipped to do so. Our systems are there. Everyone can do, we, we can payroll thousands of people from home. You know, all those type of things, which is an enormous plus and, and is really in favor for us at the moment. Also, the, 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 again, the values we talked about earlier, about how we empower people. And, and, and there's always some entrepreneurship in our business. And that, that's, the, that's also from the values of our founder, of Fitch Goldsmading. He was an entrepreneur and he always wanted units to work as small entrepreneurs in their own business. Also, that part, which, of course, is a basis on which we select people, is key, of course, for us and really helps us now because we have, in general, people who are comfortable in doing it so and being in a less frequent touch base with other people but have this intrinsic drive hmm. and to, to, to reach out and this passion to achieve and to add value to candidates, to clients. Thank you so much, Jos. Wish you a very, very important good day and a productive day and, and stay, stay safe and stay healthy.